people and have a, a medal put upon our necks and, and our countries cheer. Yet, we have our own little microcosm. Is it micro or macro? 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 We have our own small community that'll do. <laughs> We have a community that will do that. We don't have to have the entire United States behind us, and yet we are, if you think spiritually, we are the United State of consciousness. And we get to do that for one another here. We're our own little country. We get to be the community that roots each of us on as we cross the finish line, as we get on our mark, get set and ready, and go for the gold of our life, what it is that we're seeking. So, how do you live day by day and yet still work towards your dreams? Even those of you who may be retired, you know, because sometimes there's, there's, retirement is an interesting thing because there's something woven into race consciousness that retirement means. And yes, it does have the beauty and the, the value of being able to choose your day the way you want it and take the time to smell the roses as you do. And yet there's also that, well, life goes, you know, it's like retirement. Mm. If you find yourself in that, that enviable position of a retirement where you, the, you can craft your own days, that does not mean that you're still not on a path and you still don't have a purpose, that your passion can just kind of flatline. You want to stay connected to that. So how do you live in a day-to-day -day world finding the glory, the gratitude, the prize in the day-to-day -day world while continuing to envision your dreams and then live to see them out pictured. Well, I found something, a blog on the internet from a woman named, and she's in Australia, being in universal here, named Bronnie Ware. I love that name, Bronnie, not Bonnie. She writes, you enjoy the process of growing, giving gratitude for both the moment you are in and for where you will be. Prepare yourself for the life you imagine while still appreciating what the day has to offer. She sounds like a hidden religious scientist, doesn't she? It is not uncommon to be scared of success, of actually attaining your dreams. The fear usually comes about by thinking too far ahead and wondering too much as to how it will all come about and how it may change your life. Pause, there we go again. Isn't that our classic stuff? The Marianne Williamson quote about, you know, we're not afraid of, of, of failure, we're afraid of success. And then we get stuck, humanly, we get stuck in the, how's it going to happen? You tell me I can have my dream, I can do all of this, but how? How? When will it be? What should I do? And we get stuck into those, and, and the how is not up to us, it's up to spirit through us. So I'll go back to her. But if you were able to maintain a sense of presence in working towards these goals, you find it possible for each step to become gentle and clear instead of tumultuous and frightening. The most accurate explanation of this process is by Henry David Thoreau when he said, I have learned that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Pure religious science, and being one of the transcendentalists that influenced Dr. Holmes, you can hear it in that. Because if you're, if you're confidently moving in the direction of your dream and living the life you imagine, your visioning that you, you want to outpicture, you will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. Well, I believe that's what every athlete is thinking and feeling, no matter what their language or their country. I believe that's what's going on during these games. Bronnie goes on to say, you don't just wake up one day and be ready for your dreams from a place of no preparation. You grow into them. And the only way to do this is to prepare yourself for the life you dream of and grow into it step by step. Make space for the dream to unfold in your life. Grow into it. It wants you to. Again, pure religious science. And maybe if you're one of these athletes that has this dream of winning a medal at the Olympics, you, just, you, you probably sat there with the vision as a kid and you thought about that, but you also got up and you started training and working out. So you had the preparation. Well, what do we do? We start out with meditation and spiritual practice, visioning, so that we have an idea of what it is we want to outpicture. And then we use our tools, our training of prayer, spiritual mind treatment, mindfulness, to be in preparation for what it is we want to do. 
And then if from that prayer and that visioning something comes that says, well, you need to do these tangible tasks and activities so that you're strong enough to follow your dream, then so be that. That, that reveals the how. We aren't charged with sitting there and letting the dream come to us and then go, well, how am I supposed to do it? How do I get out of my chair to know how to make that happen? How am I going to have the money? How am I going to have the time? How am I going to have the energy? <laughs> the how. Our preparation is internal. She closes by saying, get yourself ready, get yourself set, and before you know it, you are going. The momentum now supporting you has been building through all of your preparation over the years, and now life is rewarding your courage. She said it right there. That's probably why I found it, because it's like, get yourself ready, get your set, go, get on the mark, and go. Allow that dream to pull you, allow the vision to call to you, allow the cobwebs of whatever years may have clouded over that about you can't, I shouldn't, I'm not worthy, how will I make it happen, whatever those mm, disclaimers that we've all fed to ourselves, whatever those are or were, let them go, let them dissolve into the nothingness from when, whence they came. So that you use something like these 22nd Olympic Games as inspiration to, yes, I still can do it. I'm still the athlete and the prize seeker. I'm still ready and willing to live my dream. The Olympic motto, higher, faster, stronger, was proposed by Pierre du Coubertin during the creation of the Inter International Olympic Committee in 1894. He borrowed it from his friend, Henri Didon, a Dominican Republic uh, priest. Ha, 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 Dominican priest. Ha, ha, another spiritual connection. But I digress. The creed appears on the scoreboard at the opening ceremonies of all <laughs> Olympic Games. And here's the creed. Because I don't know if you could see it. I didn't see it during the opening ceremony. But the most important thing in the Olympic Games is not to win, but to take part. Just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph, but the struggle. The essential thing is not to have conquered, but to have fought well. <coughs> well, I don't know about you, but I think most of us anywhere over the age of 30 can relate to that. We're not talking about the struggle and the competition and the fight of the games in our lives, but I don't doubt that there have been struggle and challenges and, air quotes, fights that we had to prepare ourselves for. And it wasn't about that. It was about having been there, showing up, getting through it, and continuing down the path with your torch to your glory. Martin Luther King didn't say, I have a complaint. So I want to tell you about it. I don't know how we're going to bring peace. I don't know how we're going to bring equality. I don't know how we're going to have people talk to each other without violence. He didn't say that. He didn't feel that. He didn't live that. He said, I have a dream. As do all the athletes. As do all of us. Even if it's old and dusty. I have a dream. He was the one who said, keep your eyes on the prize. And here we are in Olympic month, Black History Month, season for nonviolence month, all of this where we're concentrating on the remembrance of someone like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or Gandhi. And the games are a fun, joyous, festive way to remind us of the truth of what he spoke about and what eons of go, ever, mo, you know, all the people that we were drawn to, these people that we hold as icons talked about, including Lincoln this week. Eyes on the prize, I have a dream. And I know that there's a dream within each of us. And it could be a small dream, it could be a big dream, it could be an old dream that you have carried with you to this moment. That you get to have realized, that you get to be an internal inner athlete. I don't care about your age. If athlete means someone who gets clear and focuses on a dream and goes into training and preparation to outpicture and live that dream, then you are an athlete. It's not a word I would have ever used with me. I wouldn't have related to that. But it's true. I do relate to I have a dream. I do relate to taking the time to be in preparation to know from within that which is calling me and what I am to do, where I am to go. 
I recognize that. And as I've been saying the past few weeks, I'm hearing it, I'm allowing it, I'm paying attention to that, as I am encouraging each of us to do that, to listen to the still small voice, to speak our word, our truth, and to follow our dreams, our goals. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. <coughs> don't be trapped by dogma, which is living within the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They say somehow, somehow already know what you truly want to become. Then somehow, sorry, typo. Then somehow or you already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Steve Jobs. Not what I would consider particularly spiritual religious man, although he had a huge Eastern spiritual practice before and during college. But he's talking about what we're talking about. Don't drown out, let other people's opinions drown out your own inner voice, your own inner passion. Even if those people's voices are people you love and respect. You have to stay true to who you are. Then I'll go, season for nonviolence, I'll go to the other extreme with Mr. Gandhi. Well, I don't think I could call him Mr. Gandhi. Shri Gandhi? Hmm. Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. So work that backwards. Reverse engineer it. If those values are not serving you and you're looking at a destiny that wasn't what you had in mind, go back to changing your habits which created your values, which goes back to changing your actions and your words and your feelings so that your incongruence to the truth of who you are, your still small voice, that powerful expression of God that is so uniquely you, so that they're all in congruence and one and moving you forward so that you're ready, set to go. So then I have to ask you a question. Are you bold enough to live a life of greatness? Now nowhere in that did I say that means you have to train for the Olympics. You have to find the next cure for some dis-ease. Um, you have to be uh, you exalted to sainthood. Nowhere in that does it require external celebrity or accomplishment? Are you bold enough to live a life of your greatness? And how I translate greatness is to be content, peace of mind, passionate, and on purpose. If I'm, I'm in those, then I'm great. I may not have uh, history books and legacies and monuments to my name, but I will know that I have been an athlete on this path called life, that I have followed my inner guidance, that I am ready, set on my mark, and continuing to go for the goal. It's more of a marathon than a contest. It's ongoing. The torch light shines brightly to lead my way. I believe that that's within all of us. To whatever degree and whatever outpicturing, whatever expression calls to us. That's our charge. To be great. We have the teachings, the wisdom, uh, and, and my goodness, with the technology that we have so we can access all this wisdom in, a, in less than a blink of an eye to hear the words, sometimes to watch the fact that we can watch kinescopes or now YouTubes or whatever of Dr. Martin Luther King giving his speech. We're so privileged in this generation. I wish we had had that when the Gettysburg Address was given or any of those things, but we don't. We have the written word. But we have available to us the ability to hear, see, and sometimes touch the people, places, and things that inspire us, as the Olympics do. Let's use these Olympics to inspire the athlete, the spiritual athlete within us. 
Let us use this month to be ready, set, gold for where we are going as a community, which we get to talk about in two weeks at our annual meeting. Who are we? Where are we going? How's it, how's it going as we continue with the torch down the way? So with that, I'm going to close with a quote from <clears throat> Eli, Eli Weasel, Weisel, the gentleman that was in the, uh, the famous Holocaust survivor. Ali, I believe, is his, how you say it. When you die and go to heaven, our maker is not going to ask, why didn't you discover the cure for such and such? Why didn't you become the Messiah? The only question that will be asked in that precious moment is, why didn't you become you? I ask each of you that question, and I ask it deeply. If you are not being who you know you are, who you know you can be, who you know you want to be. I ask you, why are you not being you? And if there is something that I, we, your, your spiritual community can do to assist you in removing the shackles and liberating you to a place where you may be who you truly are, your unique, authentic self, the being that you are made in the spiritual image and likeness of God, that we may assist in removing whatever garbs, whatever stuff that has gotten in the way so that you are the athlete of truth. You are a spiritual athlete following your dream, following your path, seeking the prize, keeping your attention. It says it in the Bible. Put your attention on that, what you want to seek. Ernest Holmes says it. Uh, and Dr. King, eyes on the prize. We're not talking just about a prize, meaning the gold cup or the gold medal or the bazillion dollars. It's, that's not always the prize. That may be part of it. But the prize is to know that you have been on purpose, that you have honored who you are no matter how many years you may have denied that or been denied that. that this is your time. This is our time. And that time is now right here. And it couldn't be any other time. And it couldn't be any better. And it doesn't matter how long it took us, each of us, all of us, to get here. We're here now. Let's celebrate that as I celebrate the path, the passion, and the purpose of you. Let's pray. As we watch and emulate these wonderful people, particularly the sports players and athletes, and we think about them as MVPs, we can be our own MVPs. Meditation, visioning, prayer, service. You can be your own MVP. Meditation, vision, prayer. And so let me be your coach for the day. Let me assist you in that preparation and training for that greater glory of the gold of life. And as you move into that sacred stillness, and, and we suggest... You've heard it before, that you close your eyes so that you're not looking at something else, so that you really have permission and focus and attention to be in the presence of now. And as we breathe into the presence of now, this holy time called now, we know, celebrate, and exclaim the beautiful glory that there is only one life, the life of God, the infinite intelligence, the one life that is my life. For there is... A law, an intelligence greater than I am, and I can use it. That means I can access it. That it is mine because I am one with it. So I now speak the rest of this prayer in the first person so that you can hear it along with me inside your head. So I am one with that infinite mind. Therefore, I am one with the infinite minds that I have admired and respected. I am one with the, uh, the prowess of the athletes that I admire and respect. And I am one with that which I am, which I admire and respect so deeply, so dearly from within. For I am that, that I am. And as I know, claim and express that I am, all the rest is added unto me. 
I keep my eyes on the prize of this infinite truth and I go for the gold, that which shines effortlessly to my greater expression in this life. Let it be vibrant health. Let it be creative expression. Let it be financial freedom and abundance. Let it be peace of mind and heart. Let it be infinite love with the grandest valentine of all. Let all that be mine as I claim it. Thank you, Spirit, for thy will has been done through me, continues to. And thank you, Spirit, for all that is around me that continues to support and nurture me as I go forward, whether it's the rain, whether it's a hug, whether it's a spiritual mind treatment, whether it's watching the games and crying right along as we celebrate the victory. Because when we cry and celebrate those victories, part of that is because we get to celebrate our own victories, but they, the athletes in the games, are giving us permission to cry about it, to share it. So I'm grateful for all of that. I am grateful for the wisdom that continues to support and remind me of my infinite truth. Mostly I'm grateful for that still small voice that is quietly, eternally, always there, always there. As I turn within, I hear it and I smile. And I know that <laughs> I am one with God. Being one with God is a majority. Therefore, I am never alone. I celebrate that. As I celebrate what is taking place in the world around and outside of me because of who I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. Bless all of those people who have gone before us, who have carried the torch of this truth into our lives, our workplace, our homes, our hearts. Those are true Olympians. So in gratitude for all of them, for all of us, and for this moment, I lovingly, gratefully, celebratorily <sighs> give thanks, release, let it be. Please join me together as we say, and so it is, and so I am, and so we are. Amen.